Being this human is a fate worse than death, okay? Guantanamo Bay torture is not going to rob you of your humanity in the same way that this man has robbed his own and sold it. Carter Jameson is someone who's been seen with Chief Keef, Kodak Black, Lil Durk, Bobby Shmurda, Summer Rae, Lil Yachty, Steve Will Do It, Cole Bennett, and many other celebrities. But how does okay. he know? He's the GOAT. Like, what do you mean? This kid's cool as f all these people. Who is Carter Jameson? Well, his website says he's a 19-year-old serial entrepreneur, founder, and CEO of the digital marketing company Gateway Agency. But I think he's a liar. Yeah, he's the GOAT way, dude. He's not even a gateway. He's the GOAT way. Also... Liar. So to understand how this guy has made millions from lying, misleading, and scamming, we have to dig a little bit deeper. Also, I just want to clarify this video isn't necessarily to hate on him, and I don't want you guys sending hate his way because that's not really what I'm about. But I do think it's worth bringing awareness to this because this guy and other people like him have made tons of money from deceiving others. So I'm hoping that if nothing else, this video helps people not be so easily deceived. So Carter Jameson recently started getting a ton of attention when people found out he was dating Ali Lottie. If you're not familiar with Ali Lottie, she was the girl that Juice World was dating when he passed. Fans were upset about this when they found out, but not necessarily because she moved on. They were more so upset upset because Carter was wearing a watch that Juice apparently gave Ali, and he posted it on his Instagram story with a Juice World song. He was also wearing one of Juice World's shirts that was apparently a one of one. He was flexing a bag that Ali said Juice had custom made for her, and he was also seen on TikTok showing off Juice World's house and home studio. This understandably upset many fans, and it led to many TikToks about it and a few YouTubers covering it. But Isn't she also like a meth head or something? Dude, I know this because, God, I really know, I really shouldn't know this. But I do know this. Didn't they get arrested recently? Since in the time that this video came out, literally in between this video coming out and like recently, I'm almost certain that they were arrested. I didn't know who the dude was, but but she got arrested, no? Personally, I'm pretty uninterested when it comes to YouTube drama like this, so I was pretty uninterested about the situation. That was until I saw a thread by at Zifa on Twitter. In the thread, he basically exposed Carter for being a scammer and running some really shady businesses. After I read that, I checked out his Instagram and I saw him hanging out with all of these rappers and well-known people, which really piqued my interest. I had a lot of questions. How does this kid know all these people? Who is he? Why does he have so many followers? Is he really even a scammer? Well, after I did a little bit of digging, I was able to find out the answers to all of those questions. So Carter Jameson is another one of those social media gurus you see online but instead of selling you a course he's selling you popularity you might notice he has decent engagement and relationships with well-known people you check out his website and it looks very professional and he even has multiple articles written about him by forbes usa today the sun and more he's a self-proclaimed digital marketing guru who promises to scale your digital footprint to the largest of its potential and from what you see on his profile it looks like he knows what he's doing at a glance he seems very successful yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, like, those articles are fucking easy to get written about yourself. You just, like, pay for it. The type of guy you might want to learn. One thing to look for is, like, you can get a contributor to write it oftentimes learn from but yeah you can definitely pay to get those articles to work with you. but that is where you're wrong everything that makes him look legitimate upon how would you know motherfucker you think people have written about me in these articles that i've paid for i literally try to actively stop people from writing about me not the other way around upon further inspection actually proves his guilt yeah me famously i have a pr agent you know just the worst pr agent on the planet i guess think Spotted engagement. Before his engagement increased 100 times because of Juice World fans hate bombing him, he could be seen botting his account, as you can see from all these fake comments. And if that isn't proof enough, here's a picture of him testing out botted engagement on one of his Twitter accounts. And here on his YouTube channel, you can see over a thousand botted comments on one of his YouTube shorts that only has 600 likes. So it's safe to assume that he's botting likes and possibly followers too. Then there's his press. When I first saw on his website that he had a ton of articles featuring him and his business, it really made me think he was legitimate. But when you read the fine print, you can actually see that some of them are paid for. One says featured partner, one says promoted content, and another even says this story is paid for by an advertiser. Members of the editorial and news staff of the USA Today Network were not involved with the creation of this content. Even though he said himself he's never paid for press, it looks like he has. I get all my press either naturally or someone comes to me and asks me. I've never 
actually uh, just paid outright for him. And if he paid for these three, I'm willing to bet that he paid for the others as well. And this is even more ironic because of the fact that he sells press publication on his gateway agency website. I'll talk about that a little bit more when it comes to his business. And the Forbes article that he linked wasn't even in his favor. Honestly, it kind of made him sound stupid. Finally, there's his followers and his relationships. This is important because when we see someone with a lot of followers, we tend to think they're legitimate. The deception exists because the large follower numbers trick our brains into giving out credibility naturally from the social proof. More followers means more credibility, right? But I don't think Carter's botting. Ironic because like there are ways to find out that it's like not real. You know what I mean? Engagement numbers. But most people don't recognize that. They just don't know. They, they think like, oh, a lot of follower, big number, better person. His followers are faking his relationships with these people. I think that's all real. And he's achieved it through his business. So Carter's main business, Gateway Giveaways, is doing giveaways with rappers and other influencers. He uses a method called loop giveaways where he partners with popular people to give away items. Carter and probably others will spam DM people with details about the giveaway campaign. They show the estimated growth and how much it'll cost to buy into it. And the reason that someone would want to buy a spot is because when the celebrity announces the giveaway they have a variety of steps to win typically they'll point you towards another account and then they'll tell you to follow everyone that that account is following that account will be following all the investors so in return for their money they will be receiving thousands of real followers so when he gets that investor money he buys the this shit is so dumb dude and people fucking fall for this so much it's so stupid it's got to be it's kids right yeah it's always kids the items for the giveaways flies out to meet the influencer or the rapper takes some pictures with them to make his instagram look better takes pictures for the giveaway pays the influencer and keeps a ridiculous amount of money for doing little to nothing it really is an infinite money glitch and the giveaways themselves aren't necessarily scams they're not against instagram's terms of service or anything and i think he actually yeah they got arrested for possession of meth or cocaine purpose to deliver theft of property anyway he does give away the items he might not i'm not sure i have seen people say they haven't gotten their stuff that might not be true but we have seen him choose who he partners with using some ethically questionable reasons it was asian de brat who was king vaughn's girlfriend and whenever he first passed away obviously she was blowing up and he's also bragged about partnering oh with my Nelly god while he's in jail photoshopping some ps5s onto a picture of him so his business looks pretty shady you can also buy into the loop giveaways on his website through his business gateway agency and his business offers a variety of other overpriced services for example you can buy different press packages that offer articles and other sorts of press like this google knowledge google knowledge panel Google Knowledge Panel is the blue badge of internet searches. It separates professional global business and individuals on a small panel ones. package, which costs $6,500 when you can do it for free yourself. Then in the description, he has the nerve to say, you must have 20 other notable articles already wrote about you to receive this one, which is another lie. And then he tells you to buy a different press package before purchasing this one. When you buy these press packages, you're paying thousands of dollars for something that can be done for $100 to $300, which his friend says in an interview as he agrees. For anyone listening, if you're looking for PR, you could essentially get an article written about you in New York Times. Um, now, the salesman selling it to you, that article should be anywhere between one to like 300 bucks, but the salesman's going to try and sell it to you for a thousand. Yeah. He sells ad management, verification, websites, billboard advertisements, and I don't know about that for the New York Times, but yeah, for the most part, if you're talking about like uh, USA Today, Forbes, like I don't think you can get a fucking article for in the New York Times for three hundred dollars. These guys don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Holy shit! And he's like, yeah, no, that's not true. You definitely can do that for Forbes, USA Today, and the like, though. Can you imagine you get a fucking article written about you for a hundred dollars in the New York Times? What planet are these motherfuckers living on, dude? No, on the websites like Forbes's website, USA Today's website, yeah, you can definitely get an article written about you. For the New York Times, you have to be like an oil baron, brother. That's not how that works. The only reason why I've get, gotten written up by the New York Times is because like, I know journalists there. They, they personally are fond of what I do, so they personally decided to write about me. There's no other way that you could fucking just like weasel and PR your way uh, into uh, something like that. I do not work <coughs> for the State Department. I am not a Getty. I will not be getting a write-up in the New York Times. You know what I mean?
and more. And I'm going to take a random shot in the dark here and assume that he does not deliver on all these. And if he does, it isn't as advertised, especially because apparently they only accept payments through Cash App, which is very sketchy. And I guess he also used to sell paid shoutouts on his Instagram and then just delete them right away after you paid for it, which probably didn't really make a difference because most of his Instagram followers are either inactive or fake. And if none of this convinced you that his business is shady, all of the gateway Instagram accounts have botted engagement as well. For example, this one has 250,000 followers with under 1,000 likes on their recent post. Or this one with 150,000 followers has a couple thousand likes on each post and then oops, 23 likes, forgot to bot that one. Even if this engagement isn't uh. botted, it's done through the loop giveaways. And it goes to show that this so-called social media marketing guru is really just a liar and a fraud who creates an illusion to sell you his overpriced service. Especially since he's targeting a lot of rappers with his giveaways, he'll probably have a lot of wannabe artists following him, wanting to grow their fan base, so they end up purchasing his garbage service as well. Like I said, I can't confidently say that everything this guy is doing is a scam, and I don't have evidence for every single thing I've accused him of. All I can really say is at the very least he's very misleading and he's a liar but the reason that i believe he is scamming when it comes to the giveaways and the influencer marketing is because he's been caught scamming before before carter brought his scams to the rap community he was exposed for being one of the masterminds behind lana Rhodes, crypto sis nft rug pull where her carter and some others made off holy fuck bro there's no way Lana Rhodes had a fucking crypto discourse over with 145,000 members. Okay, now this makes a lot more sense that like Andrew Tate was able to run the Hustlers University scam. Crypto, specifically in the, uh, specifically on Discord, I guess, just automatically translates to 100,000 fucking rubes minimum. You know what I mean? It's just, there's so many dumb motherfuckers internationally. I did not know about this, but the fact that there are 9,000, like, this is a real Discord server. This is, like, my Discord server, man. This is a very active Discord server. 9,800 online, 145,000 members. Like, this is the same size as my fucking Discord. Hoscord, which is a cesspool. Her, Carter, and some others made off with $1.5 million in Ethereum. At the beginning of the year, Lana Rhodes, who, if you don't know, is a very popular influencer began promoting her nft project cryptosis there were 6069 awful looking nfts that were being marketed as an investment and investors were promised that this was a long-term project with nfts that were going to grow in value carter even said it himself unlike other pump and dump wait when she got called out she scapegoated to ukraine but in the grand picture of things it's so fucking stupid for me to even address outside of finding a solution for the actual holders of the nft people are living in fear of their life in ukraine right now and people are worried about nfts what does the world come to oh my god I love that. That's fire. I didn't even know she did that. Good for her. She can do whatever she wants. Projects, we don't just plan on stopping after minting. So we actually have to be able to fund all that stuff. They were hyping it up so much to the point where multiple people even got tattoos of the NFT and they were reposting it. Personally, I can't imagine knowingly scamming people, watching them get tattoos of the NFT and reposting it. So they minted or released it on January 22nd and the following day they pulled out all of the money, which was about $1.5 million worth of Ethereum. The money was drained out of this account one day post mint 1.6 million dollars was drained out of this this mint for the nfts one day after they sold uh, the collection the reason that they did this is because apparently lana's feelings got hurt by the negativity in the community but obviously this was just an excuse to take the money tons of people in the community talked about this rug pull so it's a pretty well-known scam and somehow carter still has a career and this wasn't the first time that lana had worked with carter hey guys it's lana i've teamed up with gateway giveaways and we're giving away all these great prizes all that you have it's so weird like the placement of it all you know what i mean you're like sitting in front of a gtr with like two PS5s, two Xboxes, like it's always the same shot. There's something so dystopian about every part of this process. Scamaz, yeah. How would the FTC not just get these people for issuing unregulated securities law? I mean, first of all, the SEC should be doing something as well. But uh, it's more so, it's more so, uh, you know, pick and choose type situation. So I'll just say it like this. I'll just say it like this. I'll just say it like this. No, I don't think the SEC is corrupt. Stop. I think that they're underfunded deliberately. I think that at the highest level, they don't do as much punitive damage as they're supposed to. And that's by design. And I think, and I think 
that uh, avoiding the scrutiny of the SEC is kind of like avoiding the scrutiny of the IRS or kind of like avoiding, not the top of the hour break, by the way. I'm not doing a debate. Please chill. It's kind of like avoiding um, getting DMCA'd by like a, a copyright holder, right? It's not. I already ran the ad break. Um, you guys are fucking brain broken. Chill out. It's literally like uh, some some copyright holders are very litigious. Yo, rape my eats. What the hell is this? Attack on Titan ass food that you're eating. Some copyright holders are very litigious and they'll come after you like the NFL or the Olympics. Some copyright holders are not very litigious and never come after you like MasterChef, especially older seasons. Some copyright holders are not that litigious, but then, you know, everyone's favorite, uh, uh, you know, socialist streamer decides to watch a Kid Nation episode from nine years ago that's been on YouTube for nine fucking years. And then they alert the copyright holder. And then the copyright holder does become litigious after nine years of allowing the videos to remain on YouTube unscathed. You know, it happens. What to do is follow the steps below. Right now, Carter has other NFT projects like Billionaire Butterfly Club, which I'm assuming is another attempted pump and dump rug pull type of deal. But in this instance, him and Ali Lottie used Juice World's likeness for a trashy looking NFT, hoping to bring them some attention. But he has one NFT project that is the worst of them all, and it's called Fraternity Apes Party. Yeah, guys, this is the Fraternity Apes Party. Guys, everybody in this is in the highest level frat of the real life. Fraternity Apes Party, or FAP what? for short, is an NFT project where the incentive isn't an investment, but it's that you could go to a cool party with tons of influencers and celebrities, and only holders of the NFT can get in. I doubt any of the people that tons of influencers and celebrities, and only Oh my god, is that phase adapt? Oh my god. Oh, come on, dog. Is that him? Is that... Tons of influencers and celebrities and only holders of the NFT can get in. I doubt any of the people there owned one of these. No, I'm still phasing up. These Shut awful up. looking NFTs. They somehow even got the Nelk boys to show up, but they probably paid them too. And then they acted like they were buds, which clearly wasn't the case. This is fucking my mansion for you. You guys realize that? You guys are fucking savages, man. Meta cards, man. I really appreciate you guys. Like, dude, you guys are fucking savages, man. I've been watching you guys for like fucking five years. Now. I'm done. There, I've lost the willingness to live, okay? I, it's over. Like, how can I live? How can I live another day on this planet when I just watched this video? When I watched a man who already is so soulless somehow find it within himself to destroy what remains he has that basically fucking tied him to this planet as a human, okay? Like, he has already carved out his insides and sold everything to the devil. Okay, and in that last moment, he just, he sees the Nelk boys and he thought, he thinks one last glaze for the boys before I fucking go to the seventh layer of Dante's Inferno, just right there, just one last dick ride, dude. Oh my fucking God. This, being this human is a fate worse than death, okay? Guantanamo Bay torture is not going to rob you of your humanity. In the same way that this man has robbed his own and sold it. Unacceptable. You guys are fucking savages, man. You guys are fucking savages, man. Milk boys, you guys are fucking savages, man. I tailored this frat party off of you, man. You guys are fucking savages. I love you, man. I watch your YouTube videos, man. Fuck! Just a fucking unimaginable amount of cocaine and yet no light behind those eyes, dude. But he is so zooted. Donald Trump Jr. has more of a personality than this. And they probably consume the same amount of cocaine. My man's got the most pupillated duples, if you know what I'm saying. You sound like a coked out, washed up comedian. Me? Are you him? Are you this guy, Scorpico? Yeah, he went on a journey, dude. Where are you going? You're about to get pulled over the cops for riding so hard, dude. You're riding dirty, brother.
You don't have a seatbelt on. You're just gripping. <laughs> Your impression. Man, I really appreciate you guys. Like, dude, you guys are fucking savages now. I've been watching you guys for like fucking five years now. Yeah. <laughs> No, for real, you guys are hilarious. They also paid YBN Namir to promote this as if that's going to help at all either. This is probably one of the worst NFT projects I've ever seen. Like, who thought that this was a good idea? And they even ruined Naruto. He doesn't even wear a mask and they give him a Sharingan, which just doesn't make any sense. So I'm assuming that <laughs> this is just another attempted pump and dump. Yeah. <laughs> Least unhinged Attack on Titan poster owner. <laughs> Naruto doesn't even have a sharing No, I'm just kidding. I, mean, I like this dude's videos so far. This is fun. This is good. With a different marketing strategy. So is Carter Jameson really a scammer? Well, since the thread that I mentioned earlier went live, Carter has privated or deleted some of his Twitters, and he had his frat ape friend Luke Lintz take down their podcast episode, making him seem especially guilty. And if he's willing to scam people out of $1.5 million, I'm going to bet that that wasn't the first or last time he scammed someone. He's using rappers and other influencers' names to make him money and make him look good just so he no. can funnel potential clients to his shady business in reality his business and identity online as a digital marketing professional is all a lie fabricated by his fake press fake engagement and fake lifestyle the rappers and the other people partnering with him or more likely their management should probably look a little bit more into who they're partnering with rather than just looking at the money they're going to receive because then they end up associating with a bunch of scammers which doesn't really make them look good you guys are fucking savages man <laughs> Ha <laughs>